Hi everyone, my name is Kevin. Today we are going to look at how to do both absolute and relative references in Microsoft Excel. If this sounds like a very exciting topic, well, hey, you came to the right place. Hey, uh, all joking aside, relative and absolute references in Microsoft Excel are really foundational knowledge to have, especially as you start launching into creating formulas in Microsoft Excel, being able to do a relative reference or an absolute reference is really just foundational knowledge. As full disclosure, before we jump into this, I'm supposed to say this in any video where I talk about Microsoft products, I work at Microsoft as a full-time employee. Um, luckily for you today, I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step how to use absolute and relative rel cell references, so you're gonna be an expert by the end of this. All right, well, enough talk, why don't we jump into it? Here I am on my desktop, and I have an Excel sheet open here. This is the latest and greatest version of Excel that comes with Office 365. However, if you have an older version of Excel, don't despair. Absolute and relative cell references have been around for a long time, and you'll be able to do this as well. So you'll see here, just to orient you to the data that I have on this sheet, I have a whole bunch of different items here. So let's say that I had a YouTube channel. This is some stuff that I might wanna buy. So you might want a light, a camera, a microphone, a computer, and I have a different quantity of each item. So maybe I have two lights, three cameras, if I want different camera angles of myself, maybe I have different microphones and so forth. And each one carries a cost. And what I wanna to do today is I wanna calculate the total cost of these items, and I also wanna calculate how much sales uh, tax these items cost. So I, should, I can use just a simple formula to do this, and I'll, I'll use this to demonstrate what an absolute reference is and what a relative reference is. So let's go ahead and uh, get started here with the formulas. So to calculate the total cost of my lights, it's a simple formula, but I basically want to say two times 105. So let's go ahead and enter a formula. So I'll say equals two, and I'm going to multiply that by 105, and then I'll hit enter. And so it says that it's $210 for my two lights, and that's correct. Now, what it's doing is you'll see that this is a relative reference. And so let me exactly show what that means. And so here, basically what I programmed it to say is I want to use cell B2 and cell C2, so the two cells to the left of this one. Now if I take this formula, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this same formula down. And so here you'll see the same formula copied down, but instead of looking at B2 and C2, if I click in this next one, now it's doing B3 times C3. If I jump down to the next one, it does B4 times C4, and then the last one, B5 times C5. So what's happening here? Well, I took this formula, and as I move the formula down one row, it moves everything down one row. So these two cells are now the uh, relative to this one. These are the left ones. And then the same with this and the same with that. And so that's a relative cell reference. As I move the formula, the cells within the calculation are also moving by the same amount. So because I moved this down by one row, it also moved all the items that I'm calculating, calculating in the formula down by one row, and it does it for every single one. So here I moved it down to B5, C5, and it also moved it down by that same amount. Now, a relative formula is not just limited to going down rows, it also applies to columns. And here I have the same exact tables what I have above, and I wanna do the same type of calculation, but instead of having my data go down by rows here, they go across by columns. And so what I'm gonna do is I'll do the same exact thing here where I do two, and then I'm gonna multiply it by 105, and that's the total cost of my light. And here it's 210, and I'm gonna drag the formula across. And so what you've noticed here is instead of adjusting the, the row, because the row hasn't changed as I move my formula across, here I stay in row 11, but you'll see what changes is the column that I'm in. And so here, as I move across, you'll see that all the formulas adjust. So here in my first cell, I'm calculating B9 times B10. If I go over to column C now, you'll notice that it automatically updates the column. So what it does is the formula updates as I move it across. So it's kind of a nice thing, and it makes it really easy to drag and drop your formula to calculate against a lot of data. Now what we're going to do is now let's see what is an absolute cell reference. And so here I'm going to come in and I want to calculate the sales tax for each of these items. And so here you'll see the sales tax is 10%. So what I can do is, well, I'm going to say, okay, so let's take the total cost of 210. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply that by the sales tax of 10%. 
and then I'm gonna hit enter. And so here it's $21, 10% of 210 is 21. Okay, perfect, works just as expected. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag it down just like I did with the total cost, and here I'll just drag it all the way down. But here you see it didn't multiply 10% by 3,600. And so why is that? Well, you know, here I'm gonna click into it, this formula, so it's taking the 210 times 10%. But now as I drag the formula or the, the cell and the formula down one row, what it does is it moves, it's looking at relative references and it also moves this down by one row and it moves this down by one row. But I don't wanna move this down, the sales tax down by one row because I simply say, well, the sales tax is 10% and that's gonna stay in that position. So this is where an absolute reference comes into play. And the way you could apply an absolute reference is I basically wanna say, hey, when I'm looking at the sales tax, don't change the row. And the way you can do that is you simply insert a dollar sign here. So I'm gonna put it in front of the row because I want that row to be fixed. So I'm gonna type in a dollar sign and then I'm gonna hit enter. And now what I can do is I can drag this formula all the way down and you'll see that it's now kept that sales tax in the same position. So I'm gonna click into this bottom one here and you'll see that here for the total cost that moved that down as I was moving down my sales tax calculation because that's a relative reference. However, here for the sales tax, I basically lock that in position uh, by putting this dollar sign in front of the one. Now what I'll do is I'm gonna do the same formula down here where I type in equals, we'll do the total cost, and then I'll multiply it by the sales tax. And here you'll see the same problem as I pull it across. By default, it's doing a relative reference there, but I wanna lock, in this case, the column since I'm moving it uh, to the side. And so what I'll do is I'm gonna put a dollar sign in front of, uh, let's see, this should be H, and I'm gonna put a dollar sign in front of H. I'll put it in front of this one as well. And what this will do now, so let me pull my formula all the way across. So what it's done now is it's locked the column to this one as I move my formula across. Now what I can also do is I could put a dollar sign in front of both of these, and this locks both the column and the row. And so I could copy this down. Um, and so this way, neither will change and it'll always point at this cell regardless of uh, you know, where else I put this formula. Now, a quick trick that I wanna show, what you can also do is, let's say that I didn't have the dollar signs in there. This is a nice little shortcut key that you can apply. So you simply click on this H1. So you click there and then you press the F4 key, so function four and you press that and it toggles on dollar signs in front of both the column and the row. And if I click it again, it'll just do it on the row. If I click it again, it'll just do it on the column. I click it again, it goes away. And I'm gonna hit F4 again and that'll apply the dollar signs to each one. Now, as I've done formulas in Microsoft Excel, I use absolute references all the time. Uh, it's extremely helpful, especially if you have some cell that you wanna refer back to, and that's not gonna change no matter where you put your formula. Absolute formula or absolute references are great for that. All right, well, there you have it. That's how you use both relative and also absolute references in Microsoft Excel. I hope that you found it to be pretty easy. Uh, once you understand what it means, relative is basically as you move your formula uh, and, or as you change the cell that the formula is in, the formula adjusts based on where the new cell is. Absolute references are always the same regardless of where you place that formula in your sheet. If you're able to use absolute and also uh, relative references now in your Excel spreadsheet, please give this video a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll get a notification anytime new content like this comes out. And if you have any other ideas or any other videos that you wanna see me cover in the future, leave a comment down below. I'll take a look and I'll add it to my list of videos to create in the future. All right, well, thanks a lot for tuning in. Hopefully this helped and hey, I'll see you next time. Bye.